Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Anthony here. All right, just I want to talk about um, I want to talk a little bit about the weigh-in results uh, and what uh what it can all mean. Okay, uh, first pack came in, you know, one forty-three point eight. That's one hundred forty-three point eight pounds for you, you know. And Algeria came in first, you know, uh, one hundred forty-four point four. The contracted weight limit is 144.0. But, he, you know, he's given two hours to uh, lose the rest. And he, he was able to. And then weighed in at 143.6 on the second try, okay? <laughs> Pack looked very good, you know, very fit, uh, very healthy. Algeria didn't look as good as Pack uh, at the weigh in. He he was ripped and everything, but you kind of expect that from a fighter who, uh, you know, kind of just had to drain himself. Uh, he, he actually he kind of didn't even look like himself in the face uh, because it was so like like sunken in and there was just no no water or fat to, to even puff it up and fill it out. He kind of even looked different in the face. Uh, now, now we know Pack. Um, Hit the contracted weight on the first try, even though Algeria hit it on the second try. Um, it it, it kind of shows disrespect uh, and disregard. You know, kind of shows disrespect to the sport and disregard for the contract he signed. You know, your word is your bond. You know, and he agreed to the weight in a contract. You know, Justin Fortune uh, laughed at the irony of Algeria who, you know, uh, has a degree in clinical nutrition, uh, being the one who actually missed the weight. He, he, he said, uh, I don't have a degree, but my guy made weight. You know, Pacquiao himself uh, just said Algeri looked dehydrated, which, you know, he, he definitely was, you know. Algeri's, um, Algeri's team tried making it, a, like, no big deal, but unless you're a casual fan of boxing, you know how important it is for so many reasons to make weight on that very first try. And to be around weight, at least for really like a week in advance. You should be able to make weight easy a week in advance, you know. I mean, you can use Triple G as an example. He was, in his last fight and almost all of his fights, he's ready to make weight 30 days in advance. You know, that's, you know, that's in shape, you know, that's doing it proper, professional. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, I, like I say about Algeria, it's, it was very unprofessional of him. And just to let you guys know, like, it's a very high percentage, somewhere around like 70% of fighters who miss weight uh, on their first try, even if they make it on an additional try, end up losing their fight, okay? And that's for challengers, the challengers of for entitled fights, okay? And in my opinion, it's shameful, you know? Uh, all 20 fights before, <clears throat> he weighed, weighed in at 140 pounds. This fight, he's allowed an extra 4 pounds and still missed weight and looked gaunt and dehydrated. How the hell does this team allow that to happen? How does a fighter who's moving up 4 pounds miss weight and look drained? You know, that's a rare one. Um, during the face-off, Pacquiao had a, a very serious, almost uh, angry look on his face. Even the smile he gave was kind of, you know, kind of like eerie-ish and, you know, just, you know, like, kind of like a, yeah, just weight type of smile. Uh, Algeria kind of kind of looked ashamed because he didn't make weight, of course. That's what that look was about. And then he also didn't want to look Manny in the eyes, uh, which is a sign of being scared. You know, most times when fighters uh, do that, like, that's that's just... I, I don't care what uh, positive thinking Algeria uses. Uh, trust me, unless he's crazy, he, he's intimidated by Manny staring right into his eyes the day before they fight. And, you know, giving him that, uh, just wait till tomorrow look. You know, when you gotta back up all that shit you talked, you know. There's no, no, uh, ands, ifs, or buts about it. Uh, it, it, it's, it's clear, and Manny even said so himself, that, uh, he is gonna show no 
mercy to Algeri tomorrow, like he did to several previous opponents. You know, Manny wants to KO or seriously hurt this guy to send a message to Mayweather to get that fight. And I know he's upset that Freddie was upset over the, the you know, the spy issue and the, the talking smack. And if you know Pax history, uh, anybody who ever, like, pissed Roach off got hurt severely. Like, he would always beat their asses, like, a little extra hard. Um, you know, so, and, and quit, Algeria fans can quit hoping that, uh, alright, father time, you know. People, if you're looking for Father Time to help you in this fight against Pac, quit hoping that now, because Manny looked amazing, okay? He might be older, but he is nowhere near old, okay? He just took uh, a year off to heal up everything, get his mind right, you know, <laughs> re excuse me, rehab any uh, old injuries, things like that. And also, he takes very good care of his body and has been training harder than any fighter in the game. And yes, any fighter in the game for like over a decade easy, okay? Algeri has uh, shown some signs of being a, a little scared. I don't care what anyone says. You know, uh, ever, and it's ever since he landed in Macau. You know, the interview with him sitting right next to Manny said a lot. You know, he looked agitated, which is probably from cutting weight. But he also looked nervous, okay? While Pac was uh, calm, happy, you know, and just felt good. Now Manny, uh, now Manny, like, he, he should weigh about the same when he enters the ring. Uh, he, he even may weigh, like, a tad less, you know, maybe half a pound less even. Uh, Algeria is undoubtedly going to going to weigh a lot more than he did at the weigh-in, you know, I'm expecting somewhere around, like, 156 to 159 even, okay, which, contrary to belief, is not going to help him, it's going to hurt him, this fight is about speed, not strength, okay, Algeria isn't a come-forward pressure fighter who's trying to get him inside, rough Manny up, and lean on him with that weight. That's not Algeri's style at all. He's never done it. He can't switch up and do it. It would be a disaster, okay? And by the way, anyone who ever tried that, it's never worked for Manny, okay? But, but Algeri wants to stay on the outside and use that jab, try to counter Manny, you know? The... That weight is only going to make that harder because he will be slower with that added weight. And um, and you can also overhydrate, okay? It, it happened in many high-profile fights, okay? And all but a few, uh, it hurt them bad carrying that extra weight into the ring. Now, talking about Algeria's jab and, and like, so-called uh, reach advantage... And I say so-called reach advantage, and I'll explain. Algeria has a longer wingspan, you know, from fingertip to fingertip, you know, arms spread wide out, you know. But that that's because he has broader shoulders than Manny, okay? Algeria's arms are actually an inch shorter than Manny's. The fighter with the shorter arms is always at a disadvantage with the jab, which is what he his main weapon in this fight. And especially when the other fighter is faster. And in this case, much faster. You know, and Manny most definitely is much faster. Algeri's jab is in... Okay, I just, you know, I just watched uh, some more Algeri tapes last night, okay? Algeri's jab is very inconsistent. You know, I was even watching the Ruzlan fight again last night. <laughs> And I'm sorry, but his jab doesn't even uh, come close to being in the top 40 of active top fighters in the game right now. You know, first off, it's slow. Okay, I don't care what you say, it's slow. It's it's actually weak. You know, it's very weak at times. You know, he actually kind of, he'll hold his arm like this and go, mm, mm, like it's, like, pitiful jab sometimes. So I don't know where people think he got this master jab from. 
You know, one out of every seven jabs looks good, okay? That's why I mean inconsistent, okay? And he will leave it hang out there for too long sometimes, you know? He'll throw it out there, snap it out, but he doesn't bring it right back, you know? Or he'll bring it back to his hips, you know, his hip area, stomach area, leaving him wide open to a counter, you know? That jab won't even have half of the success against Pac that it did against Ruslan. Okay, don't look at uh, Algeri Ru the Algeri Ruslan fight with your heart, you know. Um, I know we all like Ruslan for the action he gives, but just look at him, um, you know, just, just look at him in that fight with a level head, and, and the same goes for Algeri, you know, no heart, just a level head. You know, Ruslan showed nothing at all but power, you know, no real skills at all, you know, he wouldn't cut the ring off, he wouldn't jab his way in, in fact, all he did was follow Algeria around, hoping to land another big punch, nobody can expect to win a fight like that, you know, he didn't show anything at all but power, and, uh, it was just an all-around terrible for performance from Ruslan. You know, and Al Jerry barely got the nod in that fight. You know, people still argue to this day that Ruslan won that fight. Okay, uh, I know guys who know everything about boxing, damn near considered historians, experts. They believe Ruslan won the fight. You know, some of them, some believe Al Jerry won the fight. People's scorecards were different on that fight. You know, one guy was landing weak punches. And was it was, you know, trying to back up and box the whole time. One guy was applying, you know, kind of, he wasn't really that effective pressure. So it was just pressure uh, and landing the harder, you know, crunching punches, you know. And people vote different ways when it comes to that. So there was no domination. He didn't dominate any fighter, you know, that wasn't an E or D level fighter. He didn't even dominate Taylor. He lost three to four Rounds. I mean, I think the official, like uh, the 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 announcers. I think I gave him a uh, Taylor three rounds, but I think even the announcers gave um Taylor four or even five rounds in a ten round fight. So don't dare try to say he dominated either of those guys. You know, like and, and okay, when it comes to the reach, you know, an example with this reach and arm length issue. Okay, an example. Okay, my wingspan is 76 and a half inches, okay, much bigger than th those guys, okay, I'm 5 foot 10 also, okay, and my arm length is 27 and a half inches, also much bigger than both of those guys, <clears throat> okay, and I fought everywhere from lightweight to welterweight, and I did it for 11 years, so I'm speaking from personal experience, not from what I heard some announcer say on TV or some shit like that, okay? Like, say, like, it, just like, okay, oh, oh, it's all, okay. You know, like I said, I'm 5 foot 10, you know, 27 and a half inch wingspan, 76 and a half arm length, okay, so Algeria's reach is his whole, his whole entire wingspan, 72 inches, you see, you see, so I got a four and a half inch reach on him, okay, and he has an arm length of 22 inches, so I have a five and a half inch arm length advantage over him, okay, Algeri, you know, so it, 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 it's fair to say I have a huge reach advantage over him, okay, that's, you know, and, and, you know, and a ridiculous reach advantage uh, over, uh, Pacquiao, and an arm length over Pacquiao, ridiculous, you know, and yes, my build is, you know, partly what made me so successful as an amateur boxer, just like, like, you know, Paul Williams, you know, the, the weights I would fight at, I had a very, you know, lengthy frame, you know, I'm not like, rangy, I mean, I'm rangy, but I'm not lanky or anything either, I just, that's, you know, I had a good build, you know, uh, and that's why it worked for me, but, um, you know, like, okay, just like Pax, you know, 67 inch reach and, uh, 23 inch arm length, yes, 23 inches, uh, something like, 
some of my like opponents had very similar lengths uh, to those guys, both of them, to even Pacquiao, to where I even had 10-inch reach advantages over them and 5-inch arm length advantages. You know, I've, I've done that many of times. So, yeah, you would think that, you know, I would dominate everybody at that, like, it, with that build, right? It, it, especially considering, like, I, uh, I I'd always demonstrated good power. You know, I was never, like, devastating triple G power or nothing, but enough power to keep anybody honest and score knockouts, you know. And most of the times, you know, I didn't score knockouts most of the times, but most of the times I would, uh, you know, dominate, like, a... a a smaller guy where I had a great advantage like that over. But you know who I really hated facing the most? It was the little guys with very fast hands and feet. And yeah, speed was one of my best assets, okay? But when they were smaller and they, they, they just turn out to be huge problems sometimes, okay? I preferred, you know, fighting a big guy. You know, that way I could use my speed to give him problems, you know. I didn't care about a reach advantage as much as much as I cared about having the speed advantage, okay? Because speed can neutralize anything, anything, uh, even so-called timing, like you're saying right now. Because how can you time something you can't touch, okay? So throw that shit right out the window. Did you ever see anyone time Roy Jones Jr. in his prime? Hell no. Did you ever see someone time like Camacho in his prime? Hell no. You know, and the list goes on. And you're going to say, well, well, Pac ain't in his prime no more. You know, well, if he isn't, he still just soundly beat one of the best fighters on the planet in Bradley with speed. And Bradley is known for speed and is way faster than Algeria, you know, and much more athletic. He's even better conditioned than Algeria. I don't care if the dude has a doctorate. You can tell by his fucking weigh-in. He don't really know shit like these real professionals. Okay? Bradley, much better conditioned fighter. Okay? Bradley was gassed out in the eighth round and admitted so. So even if like he isn't in his prime, he's still the best fighter on the planet. Okay? Not Floyd. Not Floyd. Like, okay, I just watched Floyd Hatton last night also, okay? And Hatton was uh, beating Floyd on every card and my own, my own card, but every card and cracking him good at least 20 some times uh, in the first six rounds, okay? First six rounds, he was whooping on Floyd. Had uh, Floyd hurt a couple times, too. And don't dare say he didn't, because you need to go rewatch that fight if you don't think so. Uh, you know, and um, up until Cortez, like, pissed Hatton off so bad, and he actually bent over and stuck his ass out and uh, told the two, uh, like, to kiss it, you know, um, you know, that up until then, he was dominate not that no, i'm sorry i'm not dominating but clearly clearly winning okay there was no doubt about it if like there's no judge had uh mayweather ahead at that time okay and once hatton was the uh got like that agitated because he wasn't getting a fair shake in the fight and you know then he started making huge mistakes you know do not give me that no floyd just figured him out shit because that's bullshit even Floyd's own corner was concerned, and Hatton was a great fighter, but nothing like even the Pacquiao of today, okay? And Floyd isn't even the Floyd of them years, so trust and believe that's why Floyd doesn't want to fight Pac. And is still looking for a way out to fight, you know, trying to get Canelo or, or Cotto to fuck over Canelo and Oscar, I mean, come on, that's just his way of trying to pick someone else the fans will accept that ain't Pacquiao. Why not just fight Pacquiao? Why are you even worrying about Cotto? Let them have their goddamn fight. You know, the fans want it. Why are you trying to screw that big fight up that everyone wants to see? And, um, do not bring up the offer that's on fucking Twitter from Espinosa, okay? Because it wasn't an offer. He can't even make an offer. It was just a suggestion. Okay, and they suggested that Pac take 40 
million, while Floyd gets 210 million. Does that sound fair to fucking you? Does that even sound legit? You know? Uh, and, and, and they even suggested, you know, Pac take the small cut of the pay-per-view. You know, it was just another slap in the face, Price Floyd out situation to try and protect Floyd, you know. I had a whole video coming out after uh, the Pac-Algeri fight that explains it all, okay. Floyd even begging, you know, Cotto to fuck over Canelo and Oscar. Like, so, like... That, so he just don't want to fight Pacquiao. They're trying to find another way out of this fight. You know, if you can't see that, just like Bob Arum said, man, if you can't see that, you're blind. If you can't see that by now, you are blind, okay? Or just flat out ignorant, you know? Um, Tyson himself, uh, somebody who isn't scared of Floyd or Heyman's influence in the sport, said said if Floyd ever grew the balls to get in the ring with Pac, that Manny would kick the shit out of him. And Tyson and Floyd are cool, okay? They're cool, you know? Only people saying uh, Floyd is going to win are people who either, like, depend on Floyd. Uh, I'm talking about, like, the people in the business, you know, fighters, you know, people in the business. Uh, they're either, like, people who, you know, depend on Floyd or Heyman or are scared of their influence that they could fuck over their careers if they really went hard on Mayweather, you know. Uh, anybody that's another... Like, and, and, all right, no, never mind. Any, that's, anyway, that's just another vid. It'll that, be up after the fight. You know, back to Pac Algeri. You know, Algeri will uh, go some rounds. He'll de I, I definitely believe he'll go some rounds. Um, because he's going to, like, be trying to survive. You know, he's going to want to last the, the whole 12 rounds. That's really his goal, okay? Um, yeah, that's, that, he really is, you know. Uh like, so he's going to be able to, he's going to be trying to survive. And it's hard to KO a guy trying to survive, you know, a la Kovalev Hopkins, you know. But Algeri is no fucking Hopkins, okay. Not even a 49-year-old Hopkins either, okay. So you can most definitely um, expect Pat to eventually catch up with him and KO him. Or worst case scenario, he'll just win by a, a, a wide, wide unanimous decision, obvious victory. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting more of a, a knockout. If he gets a uh, this decision, he's Algeria's going to touch the canvas at least. You know, I, I, I believe so. Um, Look, if you actually know the sport, then you know it's true that there are levels to this shit. And Pac is levels, and I mean levels, above Algeria, you know. So I I only even see Algeria getting a flash knockdown by some freak occurrence. And, and so that's I'm not even talking about a knockout, because that shit just ain't happening. I'm saying freak occurrence for a knockdown, okay? But to actually win, no, I, I don't see it happening. You know, I just don't. Uh, Pac will outscore him easily, you know. So it so expect, like, a Pac victory uh, and, and enjoy the fight no matter who you're rooting for. Uh, and the, the undercard is amazing, by the way. You know, uh, and there, there's a complete, like, there's a couple possible show stealers on this card. You know, like the Vargas DeMarco fight. Now that can be a show stealer. And I'll actually get into that in a second, okay? The Lomachenko fight. You know, Lomachenko should put on a clinic. You know, Loma is that dude, you know, but I, I really want to talk about the, the Vargas, you know, Vargas and DeMarco. You know, I love DeMarco, okay? Because he brings it every time. You know, got heart. The dude is a warrior, you know. Um, but Vargas got uh, Memo Heredia in his corner, you know, as his strength and conditioning coach. And if you've been looking at any of his vids or pictures, um, okay. And also, in the fight with uh, Pac, there's Vada testing. And the DeMarco uh, Vargas fight, there is 
no VADA testing, okay? Um, so, e like, okay, so even though PACA does have VADA testing, and VADA testing is the real deal. If you don't know, uh, like, about VADA and USADA and how VADA is the one who actually catches people and no other, you know, that other group of guys won't use it because it busts people, you need to go watch the my PEDs unboxing video, okay? I... I guarantee you will love it, like, I promise you. Anyway, Vargas got Memo uh, in his corner and his strength and conditioning coach, and he is looking shredded. I mean, he's looking diesel. So, like, you kind of kind of get the picture of what I'm getting at, right? So expect an amazing fight there, you know, and a hell of a performance from Vargas, you know, he also got Roy Jones in his corner, if you don't know, Roy's gonna be, um, working his corner, and then when Vargas goes out to fight, he's gonna go run to the announcer's table lineup and be an announcer, okay, so it's real weird, you know, he's gonna be coach in the corner and then announcer while he's fighting, I, I don't know how that'll work out, but whatever, you know, you know. I just hope he's not trying to push any of his Roy Jones moves onto Vargas, you know, because it's just not really Vargas's style. Um, but, you know, I, w I wish Roy Jones uh, success as a trainer, you know, even as a fighter. And there's a, I even heard someone mention to me, you know, there's a good possibility in uh, Roy's next fight that he might come out looking like almost a, a young Roy Jones again. He might come out completely shredded and put on some crazy per performance against a decent fighter, you know, but he might have Memo in his corner as well, but we don't know what Roy will do anyway. I'm not, you know, Roy's been questioned before about that, so, you know, I don't, I don't know if he has a problem with it or not, especially with Memo in his corner and, uh, you know, Vargas looking so ripped, but, that fight, uh, you know, I, I have money on both of them, the Pack and the Vargas, okay, so, I mean, they're gonna be, they're, they're gonna be the action fights, but even Lomachenko, uh, the, the card's stacked, the card is stacked, um, hands down, best pay-per-view of the year, hands down, um, probably hands down, best pay-per-view of the last two years, actually, like, card, the whole entire card-wise, so uh, I mean, if you're if you're ever debating about buying a, um, a pay per view, this would be it. Which pay per view? <clears throat> ah, there was a stack pay per view maybe like two years ago. It was the no no not Cotto or Martinez. Then uh, how was it? Ah, uh, anyway, I, I I'm not drawing a blank right now. There was another good stack one, but this this card is stacked, okay? I, I'm telling you, you want to buy a pay-per-view, this would be the one. You're not going to see another one stacked like this again for at least, you know, Cotto Canelo, you know? That's the best chance you got. Uh, <clears throat> so, I don't know my, uh, you know, weigh-in thoughts, uh, pre-fight thoughts. Uh, let me hear your thoughts. Uh, drop something in the comments. You know, let me hear whatever. Let me know or no, you the YouTube, the forums, whatever. Uh, let me know what you think about the the fights. Any fights on the card, even the ones I didn't even talk about, um, and what I talked about. You know, drop some comments down there, and I'll respond. You know it. Uh, it's just Thunderdome boxing talk. If you haven't subscribed now, check out the other vids and subscribe if you enjoy. Uh, a lot of vids, a lot of good, good uh, information out there, you know. So, enjoy it. Enjoy this fight tonight because this is like Christmas to me. Got about uh, a little, little over six hours to go. Time's going slow. I know it is for you too if you're a real fan, all right? Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Subscribe if you haven't. Peace.